to write a new progress note, we come down to this menu, new note. Our patient does not have an inpatient designation, so we have to give them that to set up here. But when you order or when you put in a new note, this should be the default menu that comes up. I have many sort of quick access note titles here for all of the notes that I commonly use. However, generally this will appear just this way with the default list here. So you would type in whatever note you want. Um, med, again, is going to pull as the first thing the notes that I have uh, set. But if we scroll down, you can see it's already moved this list down to the preset medicine notes. So let's say we want to write a medicine HMP. We'll say OK. And this is going to pull up the medicine HMP template. So um, first, I'll just point out these things with asterisks are required. So as we go through this template, it's important, or when we go through any template, it's important to pay attention to where the asterisks are because you won't be able to select finish unless you have filled that out. Um, so in this case, when we have these three things immediately, we see this asterisk. It's better to go ahead and check this off um, and enter something in this box before we expand to the rest of the note, which will prevent us from overlooking this in the future. Um, as you can see, this is grayed out. So even though there's an asterisk here, as long as it's grayed out, it will not be required. If we check off this box, is the patient at risk for delirium? Now this is activated and it is required. So if we leave this unchecked, it's not required. It should be fine to leave it this way. You'll see if we expand this, we suddenly have a lot of other lines here. So it increases the likelihood that we would overlook this box. So as you can see, none of these have that asterisk. So we're not obligated to fill them out within this note template. Um, although obviously we want to enter information into those areas um, at some point as we complete our note. We scroll down and we find another asterisk here that's asking if we reviewed the medications with the patient or caregiver. We'll say yes, or maybe there's a specific reason why not, in which case you would go through these options here, um, because again, this is a required element in the template itself. And the reason is it wants to walk you through, um, you know, reviewing the medications. So again, none of these things are required. So if we wanted to, we could um, enter in uh, whatever we wanted to here. Um, chest pain, tender to palpation over the right lateral chest wall, something like that. Whatever is relevant, um, that's in our review of systems. We have our exam. Um, we have options of just simply selecting ulcer stages, which is nice. Um, and then we keep scrolling down until we have another required item here with the asterisk. So it wants us to make sure we're entering DTE prophylaxis. We can select you know, medical patients. Um, well, any of these are medical patients. Select the one that we think is most appropriate for our patient and then say finish. Before I do that, I will point out if we're in the middle of editing a note and we had to search through the chart for something. Let's say we wanted to see, you know, what did this attending admission note say? And we reviewed this information and we are okay with that. Now we want to just sign our, or go and edit our notes more. You notice that the finish button is grayed out. So be aware that you have to physically select your note in the edit area over here in the, the note title area. Now our finish button is active again, and we can say finish. And for me, it asks if I'm the primary encounter. It should not be asking the trainees this, uh, but if it does, 
um, you can put your attendings name or your own name. So we at the DCVA do not do encounters for inpatient medicine. Um, so now it pulls up our note and the first thing it does is prompt us to order VTE prophylaxis. So we'll say, as you can see, it's divided into high risk, intermediate risk, low risk. We can select intermediate risk. And unfortunately it's putting all of our boxes on a different screen. Um, so it says educate on the benefits of early ambulation. And this little box is sort of our order set guide box. So this is telling us there's one more thing in this order set after this order. Some order sets you do may have a number of different things. This does sort of control the overall order set broadly. So if for some reason you decided you didn't want to do the order set that you were in anymore, you can find this little box. You can select stop order set and it will quit everything. Just stop everything right where it is. Um, we'll continue through for the purposes of demonstration. So we'll say accept this. And then now it pulls up uh, this additional window that is going to prompt us to look for contraindications. So we'll say, you know, of no absolute or relative, we'll say no contraindications. This wants us to order heparin. We also have the option to order non-pharmacologic treatment, sequential compression devices, or TED hose. Um, we'll say heparin sub Q, 5000 Q8. Um, because this patient is currently outpatient and not inpatient, and we're not in the middle of a delayed order set, it's saying this is going to enter as a clinic medication. Is that what you want to do? Um, obviously, that probably wouldn't make sense in most cases to order a, a clinic medication as DVT prophylaxis. Um, so we'll say no, it's not what we want to do. Since that is a stopping point, unfortunately, in this case, we're sort of done with this order set. We can say next, or we could stop the order set. Either way, it's going to resolve back to the beginning. So we can just say done. Um, then we have our note, um, which we can edit here. Um, some, some of the formatting will seem off. As you can see, it doesn't put spaces after the colon. So the chief complaint, if you were to type it in in the template box, it's going to put it right next to there. So it's good to make it legible um, and you can enter in, you know, with your own formatting, however makes the most sense to you. Mr. ZZ test is a 20, 23 year old male with the chronic conditions of et cetera. And you can adjust the spacing. For some reason this has sort of reset itself so that this spacing doesn't make any sense. If we highlight a paragraph like that and select reformat paragraph, it should remove this. In this case, it's not because for some reason it's defaulted that way. But if if you're in the middle of editing a note and you, um, let's see if we just do this uh, as an example. So doing the reformat paragraph function would prevent you from having to redo line by line like that. So if we put it up here, it might let us, no, it's still not working. Um, unfortunately, for some reason in this demonstration, it's not allowing us to, we'll try one last thing quickly. Um, so we reset it all individually, which obviously is annoying. Um, and also if we right click here, we can select save without signature and that will save it in case we needed something came up we needed to step away whatever the reason may be so now our note is saved and we can come back to it later in that case if we selected file select new patient you can see uh well first it's going to ask us if we want to sign this we left it unsigned and incomplete were we done with it and we just forgot um, or, you know, do we need to sign it? We also have our VTE prophylaxis orders here, which maybe we do want to sign. So we want to uncheck our note to make sure we're not signing that and we're only signing the VTE prophylaxis order. So 
If you're ever doing multiple things in a chart at once, just make sure that you're paying attention so that you uncheck your note um, so that you don't sign your note while signing all of the other things that you're trying to do for the patient. Otherwise, you'll sign it prematurely and that'll create issues. So we'll sign this. 